Hey there, fellow web hosting enthusiasts. I'm Christian from Racknerd, and in today's video, we're going to be backing up your Docker containers using an extension called Docker Backup, which you can check out on GitHub, which is an open source platform, and the link is in the description down below for reference. We will be using this to ensure the simplicity and avoid the complexity of the built-in function of Docker itself. And to give you more background on how this subject came to fruition, I actually got frustrated with facing random errors and bugs frequently when using the built-in process, which is what led me to find this extension. And it made my Docker experience much better and easier. So we're gonna learn how to back up and restore your Docker containers with an easy and faster method, a skill that's crucial for anyone hosting websites or applications. By the end of this video, you will not only understand the importance of Docker container backups, but also be equipped with a step-by-step -step guide to get you started. But before I forget, I will assume that you already have a Docker service installed on your Ubuntu server, along with an active Docker container like WordPress, so that you can follow along with this tutorial. And if you haven't already, don't worry, you can check out the channel for our recent videos related to Docker. I will put some links in the description down below for you to check out. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. First things first, let's grasp the concept. Docker containers allow you to package an application and all of its dependencies into one single unit. This unit can be easily moved between environments by ensuring consistency and reliability. But what if something goes wrong? That's where the backup and restoration comes into play. By creating regular backups, you ensure that even if disaster strikes, you have a safe copy of your container and all of its data. But why bother with backups? Well, imagine this, your website or application is up and running, attracting visitors and clients. Suddenly, a critical error occurs. Data is lost or your container crashes entirely. Without a backup, you are left with downtime, losing data and unhappy users. With backups, on the other hand, you can swiftly restore your container to a previous state and minimize disruption. It's a lifesaver for maintaining a seamless user experience. Now let's get our hands dirty with a step-by-step -step guide on how to back up your Docker container. But before we dive in, remember to check out the links in the description down below if you want to follow along with our recent tutorials about Docker. So let me share my screen with you and let's get started with the tutorial. First off, we need to log into our server and make sure it's updated by running the following command. Once the update is complete, it is time to install some prerequisites for the Docker backup extension to work. The Docker backup requires a Go application with version 1.11 or higher, and it works with Docker hosts running Docker 18.02 or API version 1.36 and newer. So make sure that you're up to date with your Docker versioning as well. We can run the following command to check if our Docker version supports this, and it looks like we're good. But if that's not the case for you, you may need to go ahead and update your Docker service or maybe reinstall it with the same command when installed, which you can find in the previous videos. So moving forward to make sure that we have a working environment, please follow these steps. First, we need to remove any existing Go installation, if there is any, by running this command. Please ignore any error related to this, such as no file or folder, as you may not even have an existing one set up for your system right now. It's pretty normal. Next, let's go ahead and customize our Bash Profiles home configuration, which is a prerequisite for this method we are going to use soon. So simply run the following command to do exactly that. Now it's time to actually install and set up the Go environment that Docker Backup requires. We can do this by running the following commands. Please press Y when prompted to confirm the installation. You will receive prompts twice here and just let it continue the process further. Once the installation is complete, we can confirm our Go installation by running this command. Now we should be able to set up our Docker backup extension on our Docker host. 
So let's go ahead and get started by running the following commands. You can also refer to the GitHub repository in case you are watching this video in the future so that you're all up to date in case there are any changes in the commands. As mentioned, it is linked in the description down below, so make sure to check that out first, especially if you're watching this like five years later. Once our installation is done for our Docker backup extension, we can confirm it by running the following command here. Now, if you noticed, when we installed the extension, it directed us to the Docker backup directory. And obviously we're free to use the extension for our purpose, which is to back up and restore our containers. And we could do that by running these simple commands. But before we do this, let me first check out our website and modify something so that we can confirm our results later on. So I'm going to go to my WordPress and I'm going to change the title of the site from Docker WP to Docker WP dash backup in all caps. And let's also check the container we want to back up as well, which is obviously our WordPress site. Run this command to check. This command will allow you to check the containers information available in our Docker service, and we need the names or ID to create a backup. So as you can see here, the name of our WordPress container is WordPress-app, and we can create a backup using our new extension by running this command. This command will directly create a .tar file, T-A-R, containing all the container's data, and it will be saved under the Docker backup directory. We can confirm the backup file by running the ls command right here. And as you can see, here's the backup we just created. Next, before we can restore our backup, we will need to remove or rename our current active container. But before we can do that, we also need to stop it first. So run the following commands to make all these happen. So this command will stop and delete your current container host. So make sure to back it up beforehand. In our case, we already did, right? And with all of that out of the way, we can finally restore the container by passing this command to your SSH console and replacing the word wordpress-latest-wordpress-app.tar with your appropriate Docker containers backup file name that you found by running the previous command ls along with the original container name. So as a refresher, you can check out your backup file name with the ls command. And once you're ready, hit enter to confirm the restoration. This command will restore the overall data of our container, but there's going to be an ongoing bug, which I found some people fix by simply reinstalling the Docker Compose after the restoration of the data. So we can do that by deleting the Docker container once again after the data is restored, which is shown in the command, if you can read it. But no worries if you can, as long as you understand what we are doing here. Now, the next step is to run our Docker Compose file to reinstall our container, but with the backup data restored from the previous commands. So just run this command. This command will direct us to our container directory, which is within the forward slash opt forward slash WordPress in my case. It may be different for you, just replace this path if necessary, and then the Docker Compose should be able to reinstall or update our container installation from the official Docker images. This will clean up our services, but in our case, it should show the old data that we had when we backed up using our existing Docker backup. So let's go ahead and check out our website and see if we did retain our previous backup entitled Docker WordPress-Backup. And as you can see, it has restored it and we already deleted it earlier. And that's it, you've now mastered the art of Docker container backup and restoration using the Docker extension, Docker Backup. By incorporating regular backups into your routine, you're ensuring the continuity and reliability of your websites and applications. Remember, if you want to explore in more depth tutorials and resources, head over to our channel at Rackner TV. You can find it on YouTube. And if you happen to require a web hosting solution for your Docker container, don't hesitate to get in touch with us at Rackner.com. At Rackner.com, we offer one of the best VPS services on a budget. So thank you for joining me today and happy container management. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a valuable tech tutorial for web hosting. And I'll see you in the next video.